Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. What is hope? Why would we take a whole entire conference, especially the 30th anniversary with these many thousands of women, and just talk about a subject as simple as hope? Because it's probably one of the most important things that we need to talk about. To be honest, we talk a lot about faith, but I don't think it's possible to have faith if you don't have any hope. Sometimes we're trying to believe God for something, but we've got a bad negative attitude. And you can't have faith and a bad attitude at the same time and expect God to do anything. Now, I know none of you have a bad attitude. I know that. I know you're thinking now about all the people you wish were here that didn't come, <laughs> that have a bad attitude, so they could be helped, and you're even thinking, I need to buy this CD for so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so, and so-and-so. But how many of you admit that it wouldn't hurt you to have an attitude adjustment either? Yeah. Amen? Now, I've come a long way, and I don't have a bad attitude very often anymore, but every once in a while I get one, and when I do, I have to do the same things that I'm telling you to do. What is hope? Well, I hope for this, I hope for that, I hope it don't rain, I hope, I hope, I hope. Hope is not just kind of this wishy-washy, vague, well, I wonder if it'll happen, but I don't know if it will, and I guess we'll just kind of case, sarah, sarah, wait and see. That may be a worldly kind of hope, but that's not Bible hope. Bible hope is extremely powerful. It's a favorable and a confident expectation. I want to say to you, what are you expecting God to do in your life? Well, I don't know. Just kind of waiting to see. Hope is better than what I have been getting. Now, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? What are you seeing? in your mind, in your imagination? How do you talk about your future? What are you looking for? When you get up every day, are you just kind of like, well, another day, just try to make it through the day? Or are you like, man, there's no telling what God might do today. Today could be the day of my breakthrough. You know, when a pregnant woman is expecting, the longer you're pregnant, the more expectant you become. And so some of you may be saying, well, I've been believing God for the same thing for 20 years. Well, then I tell you what, you ought to be just about ready to pop with expectation. <laughs> I carried all my children over their due date. The doctor said that I was the only woman he knew that stayed pregnant as long as an elephant. <laughs> my first child was four weeks late. Yeah, the second one was five and a half weeks late. The third one was three and a half weeks late, and the last one was almost five weeks late, and he lacked one ounce weighing 10 pounds. I was really ready to get him out. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, every day I woke up, this has got to be the day. <laughs> Today is going to be the day. I'd check everything in the suitcase and dust everything off and make sure I had everything just right, and you know, every time I would just feel anything, I'd, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. I was expecting. I'm going to ask you again, what are you expecting God to do in your life? God wants us to be expectant on purpose. It has to do with the unseen and the future. You don't hope for what you can see. You don't hope for what you already have. You hope for what you can't see and what you don't have. Hope is the happy anticipation of good. I love that. The happy anticipation, something good is going to happen to me. Something good is going to happen in my family. Something good is going to happen in our nation. God is good and he is doing good things. And hope releases joy. 
Hope is very simply a positive attitude, a positive mindset. Now, if I can stand here and say to you, have a positive attitude, coming from where I came from, and seeing what God has done in my attitude, then I'm here to tell you that no matter how, how many negative things you've had happen in your life, no matter how negative your mind by, might be right now, you can have a change of mind and a change of attitude, and you can become so positive that you won't even hardly recognize yourself. The hopeful person absolutely refuses to be negative in any way. Although they recognize and deal with the storms of life, they remain hopeful in thought, attitude, and conversation. <laughs> and conversation. So often we say we're praying for this or we're hoping for that. And if you listen to the way we talk, we sure don't sound like we're hoping for any change. We can't be saying that we're in faith for God to do this and then talking about it like it's never going to change. Now here comes something for you to do. We always like to have something to do, right? Anybody can decide today to be hopeful. You don't have to wait for a special feeling. We live way too much based on our feelings. Well, Joyce, you just don't know how I feel. Well, can I tell you something? You don't know how I feel. <laughs> right now, my contact lens is aggravating the living daylights out of me. <laughs> and I got to stand here and preach to you anyway and not bat my eyes all day for the TV cameras. You don't, nobody knows how anybody else feels, but we can't live by how we feel. And the more we cater to our feelings, the more they're going to increase. Because when we give in to them, we feed them and make them stronger. But if we don't give in to them, we starve them, and pretty soon they lose their power over us. Your feelings will catch up with your decisions. Now, let me just say from the outset, we can't do anything without God. That's already a foregone conclusion for me. The first thing that I say every morning is God, apart from you, I can do nothing. And most mornings I slip out of bed and I get down on my knees by my bed and I say, God, I'm here just to simply say that I can't do anything without you. I am nothing without you. So when I say to you, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to decide, I'm just trying to provoke you to, to line your will up with the will of God and to make the God-inspired, Holy Spirit-filled effort that God wants you to make. But I want to make it clear that you cannot do it on your own. We cannot do anything apart from God, but we are partners with God. I love what Reinhard Bonnke says, God needs manpower and we need God power. And that's the truth. God needs you and he needs me and he needs us with a good attitude. He needs us full of hope and confidence and faith that all things are possible with God. Anybody can decide to be hopeful. Well, Joyce, you just don't know what's happened in my life. No matter what has happened in your life, you can start turning things around today if you'll make a decision today. That's it, I'm done being negative. I'm done talking negative. I'm not thinking negative. I'm not gonna imagine negative things. I am going with God's help to have a good attitude, but I'm here to tell you there is no promise of God that's going to manifest in our lives if we keep a negative attitude and a negative mouth. I'm preaching better than you're acting, by the way. Oh my gosh, I was so negative. I mean, honestly, if I thought two positive thoughts in a row, my brain would cramp. <laughs> Dave and I had been married about three weeks, and he looked at me and he said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> See, we only had five dates and got married. We had to do it quick before he found out what he was getting. <laughs> it was like this. You talk about a whirlwind romance. I mean, whew. And he, and he, he said, what is wrong with you? You have such a negative attitude. This is what I said to him. 
This is how bad I was. I said, if you don't expect anything good to happen, then you're not disappointed when it doesn't. You say, well, why did you think like that? Because I had had 23 years of nothing but pain and abuse and disappointment and unfaithfulness and one bad thing after another, after another, after another happening in my life. And that is exactly what the devil wants to do to you. He wants to bring a series of trials into your life to where you begin to think that nothing good is ever going to happen to you. Then you give your mouth to that. You give your attitude to it. You give your thoughts to it. You find some more negative people to talk to and the two of you get in agreement. <laughs> I'm not hanging out with negative people. I am not going to hang out and spend my time with negative people. I don't ignore problems. I talk about problems when they're there. But I'm not going to spend my life being negative. You can decide today. You can decide today. And you can be the catalyst to turn your whole family around. You can be the catalyst to turn your friends around. You can turn your workplace around. You can turn your school around if you'll be the first one to say, I'm done being negative. One day I was having a particularly bad day, been many, many, many years ago. And do any of you have what is called a promise box? You, you have one of those? Okay. Well, I used to have one of those too, and it, it, it's like a little long recipe box, and it just has scriptures in it. It's just full of scriptures. And so, you know, we were always looking for a word back then in the 70s. God, I need a word. I need a word. You know, you got the whole Bible there, but we need a word. <laughs> and uh, so I was just really down, and I was just really having a rough time. And so I went to my promise box, and I flipped it open. That's where you're supposed to do it. You flip it open, see, and you pull out a card. <laughs> And that's supposed to be something great for you for the day. Well, this morning I tried that just with my Bible. And I did it on purpose just because I thought I might get something crazy and I could make a point. Well, sure enough, Isaiah 29, 2. I will distress you and there will be mourning and lamentation. <laughs> One time I got, woe be unto you, you wicked sinner. I thought, ooh, I can... I need another choice here. <laughs> but that particular day, I got Romans 15, 13. Let's take a look at that scripture. And it definitely was a word from God for me. May the God of your hope, God is not the God of our hopelessness. He can't do anything for you if you're hopeless. And you can be hopeful on purpose. You don't have to wait to feel it. You can say, God is doing something good in my life. May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Believing is everything. What do you believe? Through the experience of your faith that the power of the Holy Spirit may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. Now let's back that up and look at this again. I want to show you something. The God of your hope, this doesn't happen if you're hopeless, fill you with joy and peace in believing and having that positive attitude, something good is going to happen. You say, well, I believed that yesterday, nothing good happened. Well, kick the devil right in the teeth and say, I'm going to believe it again today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. Keep on believing. <laughs> believing is not something we try, it's the way we live. Through the experience of your faith, and I love this, you want to release the power of the Holy Ghost in your life? Get a God attitude. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm all done with weak, pitiful, pathetic, puny living. I want some power in my life. Amen? Amen? God is the author of hope, not hopelessness. The devil authors hopelessness. Doubt and negativity steal hope. When you feel hopeless or down in any way, you must have a resurrection 
of believing. And when you do, hope will immediately set you free. Although we cannot prevent negative feelings from showing up, we can drive them away through having right thoughts, attitudes, conversation, and action. Let's look at Romans 12, 10 through 13. Love one another with brotherly affection as members of one family, giving precedence and showing honor to one another. Let me just throw this out for good measure. Loving people just really makes you happy. <laughs> if you're not happy, I can tell you how to fix it. Get your mind off yourself. Go do something for somebody else. I just saved you thousands of dollars in counseling. I said, if you're not happy, hallelujah. Just go do something good for somebody else. You'll start feeling different. Back to Romans. Never lag in zeal. I love this. Never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor be aglow and burning with the Spirit serving the Lord. Guess what? Christians are supposed to be excited. We are supposed to be excited. Well, I don't feel excited. Well, get your mind off your problems. Get your mind off what you don't have. Start talking about something positive. Start doing something for somebody else. I'm giving you an action plan, honey. Come on. Well, you don't know who I'm married to, and you don't know the problems I have, and you don't know, and you don't know. You know what? You being negative about it ain't going to change it. You may not be able to change everybody else, but you can change you. Amen. We have too much stiff, wooden, bored Christians. The Bible says we're to be born again, not bored again. <laughs> Come on now. I'm so bored. Who's going to go to church again? Nothing good's going to happen. Go to church, go home. I'm so bored, so unhappy. Nothing good ever happens to me. We need some zeal, some joy, some enthusiasm, some excitement, some smiling, some fire. Okay, but now listen to me. You know what? It's not hard in here. I don't even have to work hard to get you guys stirred up. I can say about anything and you'll go, yeah. But what about when you go home? Hmm. Did, did you feel the... <laughs> did, did you feel the mood of the room kind of dip down about several levels? See, if you really want people to think that your Christianity is working, then you stay happy no matter what happens in your life. I think joy is the greatest gift that God gives us. The joy of the Lord truly is our strength. I'm reading a book by Reinhard Bonnke on the gifts of the Spirit, and he said something that just really tickled me. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 1 says, You hath he made alive when you were dead in sin, not you hath he stiffened. <laughs> Too many Christians are just stiff with religion. They're bored and grumbling and complaining all the time. You have he made alive. When you were dead in your sin, the resurrection power of God came and lifted you up. You have he made alive. Let's go ahead and look at this rest of the scripture. I'm going to try to read it all. Rejoice and exult in hope. Be steadfast and patient in suffering and tribulation. Be constant in prayer. You see, they all go together. You can be patient. 
and not quit and not give up if you'll keep rejoicing in hope. Contribute to the needs of God's people, sharing in the necessities of the saints. Pursue the practice of hospitality. You see how all this goes together? You stay busy helping people. You may have to persevere and be patient as you go through things. But if you rejoice in hope and keep helping people and you just stay hopeful and you keep helping people, there is no devil in hell that can keep you from having what God wants you to have if you'll do that. But you can't just do it once or twice. You have to do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. I love this. 1 Peter 1, 3. We are born again into an ever-living hope. And in Titus, there's a couple of scriptures that talk about the hope of eternal life. And I said this last night, when, but I want to say it again. You know what eternal life is? It doesn't mean I repeat a sinner's prayer and then someday I get to go to heaven, but I'm miserable all the time I'm here. Eternal life means that when we're born again, we receive eternal life. And that means that we receive life as God has life. What kind of life do you think God's got today? I bet he's happy. I bet he feels energetic. Life as God has it. And then in the Greek dictionary, it says this. It is the full, this eternal life, it is the full manifestation and realization of that life which is already the believer's possession. Now see, this means something to me because... I'm a teacher of the word, and my whole goal is to help believers understand what is already theirs in Christ and appropriate it in their everyday life and live the life that Jesus died for them to have. I'm so glad that 4,982 people got saved last night. But you know what? That is not enough for me. I don't want you just to be saved. I want you to live saved. I want you to have the life that Jesus died to give you. And I'm going to be there Monday morning on that television telling you how you can have that life that Jesus died to give you. It doesn't end at this conference. Now, oh, one of my most yummy scriptures is Zechariah 9:12. Let's put it up. Return to the stronghold of security and prosperity, you prisoners of hope. <laughs> Uh-oh. Even today do I declare that I will restore double, double your former prosperity to you. Now we're going over the edge. Okay, now look. God promises us that if we will become prisoners of hope, You know what that means? I'm locked up in hope. I can't get away from it. I can't get out of it. Hope. 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 Everywhere I look, hope, hope, hope. When you do that, the devil does not know what to do to you. Now listen, the devil will attack us. He'll come against us. He'll come with negative thoughts and trying to tell us that <laughs> but 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 na 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 he can't get to us as long as we remain prisoners of hope. Amen. <laughs> you get up in the morning, the devil says, nothing good's going to happen to you today. You've already been waiting 25 years. It ain't going to change. Listen, I had migraine headaches 10 years. I don't have migraine headaches anymore. You got to keep hoping. Every day, you got to say, today could be my day. I'm expecting. You know, I have no interest at all in standing up here for an hour just trying to be a cheerleader. Yes, I can drive you into an emotion of excitement while you're here. 
That's not what I want for you. I want you to get a principle. I want you to get an understanding of something that you, this is something you can take home with you. And when you know how to have this godly attitude and stay full of hope, I am telling you there is no devil in hell that can defeat you. I don't care what's going on in your family, your finances. Yes, that doesn't mean it's not going to hurt and be hard. But when you say, God, I believe your word. I believe it. And you need to say it out loud. I believe your word. I believe your promises. And I'm going to keep believing and keep believing and keep believing and keep believing. And when you do, the God of your hope will fill you with joy and peace. You know, many people feel hopeless about their lives and their circumstances, but the Bible teaches us that God is the author of hope. So as believers, we can expect God's best to come out of every situation. No matter what you're going through, stay full of hope. ఉండరండి <laughs> ఎప్పుడు చూసిన విరోచనాలు జ్వరం అవుతుండే డాక్టర్ కాడికి వెళ్దామంటే పైసలు లేవు ఇంకా పిల్లలు అట్నే పండుకొని ఉంటారు వి హవ్ బీన్ ఏబుల్ టు ఐడెంటిఫై దీస్ విలేజెస్ త్రూ గవర్నమెంట్ అండ్ త్రూ సమ్ లోకల్ ప్యాస్టర్స్ సో దిస్ వెల్స్ వాట్ వి ఆర్ డ్రిల్లింగ్ టు జాయిస్ మైర్ మినిస్ట్రీస్ నో వి టేక్ ప్రాపర్ కేర్ టు ఫైండ్ వేర్ ఈస్ ద గుడ్ వాటర్ through a good water diviner it will take about 3 uh, days to go to that village and drill the bore well to give fresh water to the villagers na pillalu kuda badiki pottaru నేను కూడా పొలం పనికి పోయి బాగా సంపాదిస్తాను ఈ గ్రామంలో బోరేపించడం ద్వారా ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి జీవితంలో ఎంతో మార్పు వచ్చింది ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి అవసరాలు తీరుతున్నాయి కాబట్టి యేసు ప్రభు దేవుని తెలుసుకొని సంఘంలో సభ్యులుగా చేరడానికి ఎంతో ఆరాట పడుతున్నారు మాకు ఇక్కడ ఒక బోరేపించి మా ఆత్మీయ దాహాన్ని తీరుస్తున్నారు మేము పాస్టర్ ద్వారా ఆ నిజమైన దేవుణ్ణి తెలుసుకొని ఈ సంఘంలో ఆ యేసు ప్రభుని ఆరాధిస్తున్నాం 